So, in this little clip I'm gonna give you some feedback on coursework 2. I just want to point out a few points that you seem to struggle with and help you with that. Overall, I'm quite happy, although it's over, also obvious that quite a number of students just didn't properly engage with the material so far. You still have quite a lot of time until the exam, but um, you really need to get going you have a lot of material to practice there are the online quizzes of course all the exercises there's always examples in the lecture notes so you really need to get going and I guess you know who you are so now to the coursework the first aspect I want to talk about are correlations so so, we know that the correlation between two variables, let's uh, call them m and p, is calculated as follows. And importantly, we know that the correlation will take values between, zero, between negative 1 and 1. So, that means, firstly, for calculations, to calculate correlations, what you need are first these three inputs, the covariance, the variance of the two individual ones, and the covariance between the two. And then, once you calculate a correlation, you can easily check whether you have not the right result, but if you have a result either smaller than negative 1 or larger than 1, you know you've made a mistake. And that's why I'm saying this, because quite a few of you gave answers for correlations that are larger than 1 or smaller than negative 1. So let's quickly look at the Excel calculations for this. Here are the data you were given. The, um, for our 10 countries, we have a number of variables. And just for you to see, if we how I calculated that here I used the functions in Excel okay so there's really no no point of not using them uh, the sample mean the functions the average sample standard deviation stdef dot s and you can see that I always refer to the to the respective cells and the same for average and sample variance, what do I do here is I take the sample standard deviation field and square it. So what about the sample covariances? You only had to calculate them for all possible combinations amongst these six variables. So you can see the six variables here. So let's see what we have here in the covariance between tot x and gov x. If I highlight this, you can see we have the covariance.s, a sample covariance, and you can see that I refer to these two different series, and they're in the command they are separated by a comma. So here the value is negative 0.21498. So if I click into any, any else, for instance the covariance between GOFX and NW, I'll again have the covariance.s command, but I refer to these two datasets, GOFX and NW. So, once you've done that, here you have all the covariances, and here you have all the sample variance which you need, okay, or sample standard deviations. So, it means with these bits of information you can calculate the correlation. So, let's see that, for instance, the GOFX NW correlation. Well, actually, what I what I did use here is I used the uh, the correlation command. So that's in um, in Excel that is Corel. And again, I refer to these two elements. But I just quickly want to show you how I could get the same value by using the previous result. So what I want to use is GovX NW. I want to use this field in the numerator and uh, 
log of x and n w standard deviations in the denominator. So the correlation is the covariance divided by the product of the two standard deviations or the square root of the product of the two variances is the same. And what I get is 0 0.541379 which of course is exactly the same as the result we can see here using the, the Excel function. So let me delete this. So here are all the correlations and you can see that none of these correlations is larger than 1. You also see that I only calculated, for instance, the correlation between Gov X and NW. Correlation between NW and Gov X is basically exactly the same value. Okay, it doesn't matter which variable comes first, so you only need to calculate one of these. Okay, so you should certainly be able to replicate this. You should, of course, also be able to do these calculations by hand. That was in fact in task one. I just gave you four observations for variables m and p and you could do that and of course you should be able to replicate these results but that seemed to be alright for most of you. So the next thing I want to talk about are regressions. Okay, because you certainly seem to have problems with some aspects of regressions. The two aspects I want to talk about are, are squares and interpretation. So you know that the R squared is a measure of fit it tells us how closely the observations lie clustered around the regression line and it's calculated as follows. Let's see what we have here. You have to of course remember some of the notation SP and SS these were the standard deviations of P, the standard deviations of S. Now let me just briefly go back to this I, I have this still here on purpose to this equation up here there's a way of rewriting this and we use that in the calculations actually in the spreadsheet. We leave the covariance unchanged and this was of course nothing else. The, variant, the square root of the variance of m was nothing else but the standard deviation of m and the square root of the variance of p was the standard deviation of p. And up here the covariance, so the covariance we also labeled as SMP, and so divided by SM times SP. Now you can see that we can reformulate slightly our R squared. You can see that both numerator and denominator are squared, so that's nothing else but SPS divided by SP times SS, and that whole thing squared. So what you can see here is we of course have different variables. Here we had MP, here we have P and S. But what you can see here that this guy here is of course nothing else but this. So it's the correlation coefficient. So it's the correlation between in our case down here P and S squared. So if the correlation between P and S takes values between negative 1 and 1, what will the squared values, what range will the squared values be in? Well from this we can conclude that R squared will have to be large or equal to 0 and small or equal to 1. Okay, so the largest possible value, 1, 1 squared will be 1. The smallest possible value, negative 1, negative 1 squared is going to be 1 again. And let's say the value in the middle, so if correlation takes a value of 0, so correlation of 0 squared will be 0. So if you square any value in this range, it will end up in this range. So 
clearly some of you didn't do any of the correlations, uh, regressions that were asked for, and if you were asked uh, for a value of r squared, you guessed. But please, if you guess, at least guess values between 0 and 1. So last, I want to talk about the interpretation of regression results. So what we're going to do is, we're going to look at one of the examples. So here is one of the examples. We're meant to take as a dependent variable male obesity and as the explanatory variable, the variable tot x, we can just quickly confirm in our file what these variables were. MOB, male adults 15 years and obese as a percentage. Okay, how many, what percentage of males is obese and PCX was the per capita total expenditure on health uh, in dollars. Ah, sorry, no, it was uh, tot x, it was mm, da -dum, da -dum. so it was this one here, total expenditure on health as percentage of GDP. So, in Excel, how we did that was as follows. Here is the result. Okay, model that was model two. Here is the result. I just want to show you very quickly how to how to get there. Uh, although you could have seen that already in other uh, clips. So we have our data are up here. Uh, tot x is here and further to the right is MOB, so let me just hide a few. Can see them all together. So here you what you need is in data you need the data analysis again in a previous clip. If you can't see that you need to include an add in. There was a previous clip that explained how to do that. Once you have that add in there will be an option regression, you choose that. So we need an input y range, that is the dependent variable, in our case that is the obesity variable. The x variable is tot x. And we want our output somewhere, in, in this case now I'll let it go to a new sheet, I'll call that test, so I'll click OK. And here is our new result. That's of course exactly the same which you can see on task 3. So, and what we get here is this regression output. Now before we go back to that, let me write down the regression. Let me look at this. So, here we have the regression model. These two guys, remember, this one and this one are coefficients of our regression. Beta naught and beta 1 are unknown. So what we need is we need estimates. And these are the ones which we get from our output in Excel. Let's look at our output. Here it is. And uh, a few things. Firstly, the estimate estimates for beta naught and beta 1. We call them B naught and B1. Sometimes you will also see beta naught hat and beta 1 hat. I don't really care which notation you use. So let's write down our estimated model. The predicted value for male obesity is the estimated value for B naught. Where is that? That is this guy here. Now let me use different colors. Okay, so this guy here, that is this one. So that is 7, negative 7.165 zero plus, and now we need the estimated value for beta 1. Here, use yet another color. 
that value is this guy here. That is for the x variable, the coefficient to the x variable. So that is 2.4170. Oh. times tot x for the i country. Okay, so this is our estimated model. So, also as a note, you can find the r squared, and that is here. Okay, so that means that almost 60% of the variation in the dependent variable can be explained by variation in this one. So now in what sense can it be explained? Here we have a positive coefficient, that means everything else being equal, the larger the total expenditure, that's as for health, as percentage of GDP, it turns out that we have higher obesity. So you have to be careful that you cannot interpret that as a causal model. Okay, it's possibly not true to say because we spend more, we are more on health, we are more obese. Okay, It's just that we spend more if you're a rich country, and if you're a rich country, rich countries tend to be um, more obese. Okay? So it's not the fact that we spend healthcare that we get obese. So, but how would we interpret this particular value? The interpretation we have here is that if the explanatory variable increases by one unit, so a 1 and the units are percentages, so a and 1 percentage point increase tot x is associated to a 2.4170 unit and what we have here, how is MOB measured again as percentages, so it's associated to 2.417 percentage point increase in MOB. Okay, so this is how you interpret this variable. What about the interpretation of the constant? Well, this is not so straightforward. Oh, it's it's pretty straightforward in in a formal sense. Means you would expect a obesity of seven of negative seven percent if we had no health expenditure. Of course, that doesn't make sense. You can't have a negative percentage of obese and the reason is that it doesn't make sense to say we are not spending anything on health. Every country, certainly in our sample, spends money on health. So you shouldn't interpret your regression regression, regression outside the range of values for the explanatory variables. So that's all I wanted to say in terms of feedback to coursework 2.